So let's first start by creating a simple Flutter application for which we will say Ctrl Shift P and I'll name this as drop downs and we'll wait for this to be created and once it's created we will create a very minimum scaffold and an app bar which will say drop downs at its center and then we will see our code. So just as you can see our very basic application is up and running and let me just remove this debug mode banner now let's talk about drop downs so basically in a drop down you get a button when you click on that there are multiple options out of which one can be selected and we are going to implement first that that how can we create a drop down then how can we fetch the value of the option that's selected now for that here in the body just as where we have a center i will here remove the child as text i will make this a column because later we are going to do two things and also right now I'm going to have a text widget which will show the value of the selected element. Now in this column I have my children which is a widget and the first one is going to be a drop down button. Now here the drop down button itself will give you a scroll if there are multiple options in the drop down itself but if there are something on your screen then you will need a single scroll child view or a scroll view anything as such. But right now we will just have a single drop down button and a text we won't need that. So here is the first thing that we have. Let me give you some padding so that things dot match on each other. First padding is going to be as insects dot all just 5.0. And in the child, we have a drop down button, drop down button, which will take a string. And this drop down button will have some values. So let's give them one by one. The first value that we have is an items and this items as you can see is a list of drop down menu item. The next thing that you have is an on changed which will take a value and it will give us as a, a string things which are changed as the value which has been selected. Now here in our items let's first create an array of which is a list of drop down items which is drop down item and this will again take a string and it will give us further some values the first one is the child and a value so let's set the value first let's say the value is one and child can be any visit I'm saying it's a center visit so that the text is at the center and it's oh, child will be a text and you can give your text any value let's say o any one on changed we take a function which takes a value as an input as a parameter actually and then I'm just trying to print that value which we have right now so value dot to string that's pretty much it let's save it and I think we're good to go now here there is nothing right here but if we click on this we get this one now with this means that we can keep as many elements as we want here this drop down menu item let me just copy this I'll paste it three times obviously later on you can do this by very less lines of code but right now our only objective is to understand how this works our coding skills we can keep them aside for a couple of seconds or minutes now once you click on this you get these options one two three which are in the center now if you want to show some text right here we call that a hint so here when I say hint this will take a text visit and this text visit will hold the data which you want to show that's I'm saying select any number okay if I save this now here you get this select any number if you want to darken this you can just text give this text some style in a normal way using which we give this a text some style and when you select any value you will see which it's get printed right here in two now let's make it even better I'm saying after this padding we have a text visit and this text visit which actually show the value which will be selected so for that I'll first need another string right here I'll call that value string value is equal to an empty string and then here I'm saying in my on changed I think it's okay in this way too I'm calling set state and the set state come on okay I'm not getting 
auto code suggestion that's okay so I'll call set state and in set state I'm saying change the value of assign the value of underscore value to value fine that's okay now here we have to just add that value for which I'm saying basically it's not adding it's printing that so money sign and then value I think we're good to go now when I select any number let's say 2 we get here 2 Select 3 we get here 3 we select 1 we get here 1 now remember this value is something that we get as an output and this child is something that's on right here so all that we see is only one two one twos and threes but the value that we get is an integer not in string now one more thing that we would like to implement in this tutorial is that how can we make sure that there are true drop downs and only when the first one is selected then the second ones get selected so let's see how can we that get that and for that let me first create a simple ui here i'm saying that the main axis alignment will be main axis alignment dot center okay now i just want another drop down so let me just copy this entire code and i'll paste it here don't worry i'll tell you everything from the very beginning let me just copy this and paste it right here and let's save it and here you can see we have true drop downs now the thing that we want to do right here is that we want to tell our user to select any field and those fields are our tech field the first one is web this two will be the second one will be app and the third one will be desktop so let me do that quickly now when I click here you see we get web app and desktop completely okay now all that I want is that only when somebody selects a value in these three then we get further options right here so for that we have to implement two things the first thing is that you have to make sure that this is by default this drop down button is not enabled this is disabled and doing that is actually very easy in this on changed if I set the value of on changed to null then we can achieve this and now you can see that this is deactivated this is not available one more thing that I want is that how will the user understand if it is available or not one thing is that this underline which you can see is very it's not visible right now but that's not something which you will want so we have another option right here which is disabled hint which takes another text and here for my disable hint I'm saying that first select any field so now you can see that since the on changed is null we get this first select any field and when the on change will have any value which any function call then it will change itself to select any I want to say technology fine now how are we going to keep our technology so first we are going to create a map a map in a way that it will be final web and this is going to a map we are having key value pair so the key is one and the value is so technologies for web will be php node.js and python so php python node and these values will be one two and three i do the same for app and desktop too so now we have three maps with web app and desktop with the respective options now just let's go back right here and all that we want to do is that we have to create this programmatically and dynamically based on the option selected so this item as I said already is a list so I'm just going to get rid of this list from here and I'm going to create this list somewhere right here an empty list so we'll say list space list of drop down menu but drop down menu button drop down menu button come on which takes a string and we are calling them as menu items because these are the items which we want in the menu this is going to be a list fine so we have a list but that's empty now we have to tell this drop down menu button that don't worry I'm giving you an item of list which will be menu items 
Now we have to populate it. You see, we get an error, and the error is that can't be assigned to. Okay, it should not be a button. It should be item. Drop down, drop down menu item, and that's completely okay. Now we have to populate this list based on this particular selection. So let's first make sure that we get this in a good function. I'm not going to call this right here. Let's just say that this takes a value and this calls another function which will be value changed give it this value this value changed is not available so we'll have to code it i'll say avoid value changed which takes a value underscore value and this just calls the set state which will set the value of value to the parameter which is underscore value now here I want to say that when this value is available first check what the value is and then we will populate this now to populate I'm using and I'm coding this function right here let's me just give it uh, tell you how the function of populate web will work and the next two will be speed coded so void populate web and this will populate this menu item using these values so here I'm saying for and we have a string which will be a key and this key we are getting from web dot keys and I'm saying for all the available options all those available keys menu items dot add and all that we have to add is a drop down menu item drop down menu come on why am i not in, not getting suggestion okay drop down menu item which takes a string and this string will have its own options on values actually so as usual we will have a value and a child so the value is going to be again web with key and the child is going to be with a center a text which will again be web key not keys key now this is quite okay let's see what do we have next so if the value is web we want to populate the list with the options of web so what I'm saying that if the underscore value is equal to is equal to and make sure that this table is capital because the value which we get right here is capital W and I'm saying if this value is web then call the function populate web that's pretty much it but there's another issue I also want to make sure that this drop down button is now available for that I'm going to call I'm going to use another boolean variable right here I'm saying boolean and let me name this as disable drop down and let's set that to true so by default it will be disabled and here I'm saying as soon as we get this so I have to populate it and then enable it so I'm saying disable drop down will be false and here all that we have to do is we have to first check for disable drop down and since by default it will be true then I'm saying that this will be null and if it's false then it will be true which means we will have to call a function so I'm saying call another function give this to a value but let's name this something else and I'm saying second value changed and the second value changed will again take the value as a parameter let's just switch it right here and this function we have to code so let's just go here won't be doing much I'm just saying void second value changed it takes a parameter underscore value and I'm just saying just just call this set state and just make the value of that particular value now I hope that everything is okay as of now okay we get an error which says something is expected right here I guess okay we don't expect this let's refresh and we have our values come on okay so if I select any field 
since see this is disabled by default and when I select something let's say app we don't get anything but if I select something like web we get all the options of web now we have to do the same thing for all the three so let's just do that very quickly okay if we hot restart then now I think things should be working pretty cool if I select web I'm getting all the options of web but I think there will be a simple error if I select app then I will get all the options of web as well as app why because we're not clearing the list so basically here we have to make sure that the list is empty now only once by default is it will be empty later on it won't be empty so I have to make that empty I'm saying item list I don't know what that was it is menu items so I'm saying menu items make them an empty array and I have to do this all the at all the places even in app and even in desktop and make sure that the A and D of desktop are capital because if it's not then the values won't match hot restart again and now we are good to go just take a look right here I'm saying web now this is available and I can select among all the web technologies I'm saying app this is available and I can select among all the app technologies if I said desktop this is again available and I can select among the all the app desktop technologies if I select tinker you see we get tinker if I select gfx we get gfx if I go to app if I select flutter then obviously we get flutter so that's it from my side in this video we have learned about drop downs and multiple drop downs so that they can work only in coordination with one another I'll catch up soon in the next video we'll be talking possibly more about flutter and a lot more